I will show you how to take an image like this and change it to something like this. I'm going to teach you how to do this in Stable Diffusion and we're going to use the power of in painting. It's super simple and after this video you're going to be able to do it too. I'm also going to show you some tips and tricks on what to do if things don't work out your way. Oh and by the way, yesterday I ate a clock. It was very time consuming. Especially when I went back for seconds. Hey, uh... Today we'll be using this image as our starting point. I generated this through Stable Diffusion. This is a 1.5 image and we have a woman here with uh, some sort of a top. This is a, is that a crop top? It's a white crop top and a blue pair of jeans. And uh, just to make it especially hard here, we're having uh, her hand inside the pocket here. And she's standing in this uh, beautiful uh, little park here or, or whatever that is. So we're going to show some various ways of how you can uh, change the clothes of this woman here or of any character for that matter. It doesn't need to be this one in particular. You can change anything and in any style. It can be photorealistic, it can be painted, it can be whatever. So we're going to go into the image image tab here and then we're going to go into the in paint tab. Now I am using an in painting model. Now you don't have to do that. You can use a regular model, but if you have an in painting model, you can download that from Civitai, for example, your experience may be slightly improved. But then again, when I'm live streaming, I don't really use the in painting model at all. So it's just for some special use cases where it works a little better. Now, when you're inside in paint, if you press S, you get a little zoomed in view of the image here where you can draw. You have a little button here which changes the size of your paintbrush. Just remember that if you want to press S you have to close this down again. Now we press S and we're just going to draw outside here of the pants and a little bit of, of the outside. It doesn't have to be perfect. However, if you are having issues with the outside of the image giving a uh, weird blurred lines, stuff like that, you can go back and paint a little, little bit of inside, like a, a couple of pixels inside of the pants. Bear in mind, that will give you a little bit of an outline, so it depends on what you're gonna be changing the clothes to. So we have a pair of blue jeans out here now, and uh, there are many ways to, to do this, and my preferred way is I have some styles for this. So what I do is I just put in pants here, so this is what it is, and then I have preloaded in painting cloth styles and these can be found through my patreon so we have cotton fine cotton regular denim flannel latex leather linen silk velvet wool uh, in various formats so for example here if i put in the leather one here just close this one down my prompts here now will be filled with styles that suit leather clothing now you can do this manually and just enter pants, leather, whatever, find some suitable negatives for that. But I found that using these styles that I've prepared work very well. Scroll down a little bit. We are going to choose most of these settings default. So we have the in-paint is already masked. So we have painted the area that we're changing. If you did it in reverse, you can select in-paint not masked. About the masked content here, most of the time we're going to use original, but we're going to change sometimes to fill or latent noise, depending on what we do. So especially if you want to change the color, we might change this to, to latent noise. Because if we do this with original, it might be a hard time changing this from blue to red, for example, as original reads from the pixels that are down here, which are, well, it's a pair of blue jeans, so a lot of blue pixels. The in paint area here, most of the time we're going to change this to only masked. That means that the painted area here is going to be zoomed in and the resolution that we select down here, which in this case I'm changing this to 768 by 768. We're going to have a box here that is 768 by 768. So we're going to have some more detail into this uh, and then it's going to be slapped into the full picture. If we do this whole picture, all of this will be generated as, as a resolution, so, so the pan will have lower details. However, it can blend better into the image. Let me show you in a second. We're setting this to only masks. We're changing the denoising strength to about 0.7 here. And we're doing, let's do two images for now, so I can show you. So we have pants and we're changing them into leather. 
and we have the hand here still inside of the, the pockets. Now you can see here we have two images. So one of them I would say looks very good so far. We have a pair of black leather pants. The hand looks okay. The thumb isn't perfect, but this is just our first generation. The edges here, I would say, look very good. And in this example, I think it also looks very good. Now we don't can see the, the finger on the hand, but it looks fairly natural, fairly natural, I would say. So just making these simple changes, we have come a very far way with just changing the pants here. Now, if I generate again now, let me show you here where it zooms in. So you can see here, now it zooms in on this part here. And this is where it's generated. And if we change this back to whole picture, you will see that it generates from the whole of this image. See here now. Now it turned into a, a, a wrong resolution here. That's because we set this as 768, 768. So we're gonna press the little auto detect ruler here and render again. And that will give us the correct one. However, doing it like this, we will get less resolution at the pants, but it will blend in better with the image. I prefer to in paint with only mask, but if you are doing things that look out of place, they're getting too much detail compared to the rest of the image, just remember that changing whole picture only mask can help that. Now we change the, this into a pair of black leather pants. Let's see if we can change the, the white crop top here into something else. And let's actually change the color as well. So if you want to keep iterating from this image, we're going to have to drag it from the right here to the left. Now this area will still be selected. So you have to delete that with the little eraser here. And now you can draw a new mask here. And I first, I pressed S to zoom in. And then I'm drawing here around the top. I'm gonna make the brush a little smaller. You can also do this by holding Control or Command and scrolling on your mouse wheel, as you can see, as I'm doing here right now. Now we're just gonna paint these little bands here. And then we're zooming back out. And now we're saying green, crop top. And now let's remove our styles here. Now, if you aren't using a local version or you're using a cloud solution for this, uh, these styles come preloaded in, for example, Think Diffusion. So you can use them pre-installed there without having to do anything for yourself. So let's try here silk, for example. So now we're doing a green crop top with silk. Let's first try with the same settings we had for the pants. Now we will be getting a new pair of, uh, of a crop top here. It's, well, it is green, but it isn't very green. And that's because it has the white pixels here. So it tries to change from that, but it can change a lot. And that's because we have original selected. We also have the denoising strength at 0.7. So it's changing a little bit, but not a lot. Now there are multiple ways you can fix this. You can raise the denoising strength and you can change the masked content. Those I would say are the, the, the primary ways. So let's first change to latent noise. So instead of looking at the crop top here and seeing it as white, we're gonna get new noise, which will give us a lot of new data to work with. Now this can introduce a lot of weird stuff into your image. However, it will also be able to give us a, a completely new color or, or set of top here. And as you can see in, in these examples, we have this one, which is some, some new pattern that didn't exist there previously. We actually even lost the bands up here. And in this second example, we have a top in green silk that I would say actually looks pretty good. Now, if you aren't getting the results that I'm getting, you can increase the denoising strength here. So let's say I increase this to 0.9, for example, now we will introduce a lot of changes. So this might break what we're doing, but for some images, it might be necessary. And as you can see for the results here, they are still fairly good. We're getting a completely new style. So we aren't keeping the old style, but the images look, well, actually fairly good. And if we go back and lower the denoising strength here to let's say a 0.5, we will retain more of the structure that was there previously. And as you can see, if you remove the mask here, you can see it has retained much more of what this looked like. However, in a completely new style. But as you can see, we did two images and this one didn't work at all. It didn't have enough time or didn't have enough data to create this new image. However, this one did. 
uh, I would say a value between 0 0.6, 0 0.9 it is most of the time your sweet spot, depending on what you want to do. Th there's no perfect value, I'm afraid. So you're going to have to learn to test. It's a little bit of a trial and error. Now we had an error here and this says value error coordinate right is less than left. And th if you get this error, it basically means that you have not drawn a mask. And if you remember, we deleted the mask, so we don't have this mask here. So we need to redraw it. I'm going to draw the bands here as well. And now we have our mask selected again. Now let's change this to a red crop top and let's remove the silk and let's choose one of the other in painting styles. So let's try, try here. We're going to select a latex glossy here. We have a red crop top. We have a 0.8 denoising strength and we're using latent noise just so we can get some new data in there. We got two results here, which both of them failed actually. So let's run this again. And without actually doing any changes to this, we actually got a good looking result here. So this is the part of generative AI that is, well, random. You get a random noise. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's a little trial and error. Now, if you don't want to change the color or just the material here, you can just say crop top. We have selected latex plastic glossy here. We have changed it to mask content original. We have set our denoising strength, I would say between 0 0.6, 0 0.8. And if we generate this, you will get a similar looking crop top just in a changed material. So here you have uh, the white version and two images. And if we change this, let's remove the latex one here. Let's keep all the settings. So we're going to have a white and let's change this to a velvet instead. And we'll generate two new ones. If we look at the results coming in here, we have more of a velvet like material. This one turned out to be a little more of a fur kind of thing. If you generate two new ones, let's see what we get. I would say this looks more like velvet and also this, although can see that from the edges here that it's a, a little longer than the left one. However, we successfully changed the clothes and, and this is fairly easy, I would say. Just remember that if you want to keep iterating an image, you always have to drag it from the right to the left here. Now you can also add clothing. So let's say you want to add something that isn't there, then we're probably going to go into something called in painting sketch. So we're going to go into that tab up here in painting sketch. We're going to drag that image there. And here we can actually select a color. So we're going to take a red here and we're just going to draw a hat here. It doesn't have to look amazing. We just need to get the color in there and then Stable Fusion can work its magic. So we're going to say red hat. Let's select one of our materials. Let's use a leather here. Now we might need to up our denoising strength because of the way we painted this. This is just a solid color. So yes, it will want to use the red, but it wants to have shades of red. And if we don't raise the denoising strength, it will not be able to do that. We're using mass content original because we want to be able to utilize the red that is there. And as you can see, coming in from the renders here now, we are getting a red leather hat. It's not perfect by any means, and that's not to be expected. However, if you take this now and use the regular in paint. So if you send this there, and now we can draw a new mask on top of this. There we go. We can now use this better looking red hat, which is much better than what we painted there previously and run this again. So we have red hat, leather, we're still on original. Now we're going to lower the denoising. I would say 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and we are generating two new images here. And now our edges will look much, much better as you can see in the results here. We kind of missed a little bit down here from our mask. That's okay. I'm sure that you will paint much better than I did. But apart from that little miss I did, I think this looks very good actually. So by utilizing this workflow, you can completely change a person and what they're wearing. So this is super, super powerful. And I hope you learned something today. Please check out my Patreon where all the styles are available. If you don't want to do that, you can just type everything in the prompt manually. I just provided this as an easier way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. See ya.